further ahead, we'll be starting with a topic. A topic which all of you all are familiar about. A topic called to be electricity. But under electricity, there are two important terms. If I speak about the first term, electricity, the first term when I speak about, I can call the word static and the other word which I call will be current. Now for a student, will certainly get confused. What exactly electricity means? What exactly static means? What exactly current means? The term electricity, if I consider, is simply called electric charge. It's simply called electric charge. Every physical quantity in physics has to be abbreviated by a symbol. Electric charge is symbolized by a variable capital Q. Its unit we call an SI, so called as a system internationally accepted unit. And this SI unit we consider is called Coulomb. C-O-U-L-O-M-B. Abbreviated as capital C. Named after a physicist, Charles Augustine Coulomb. So electric charge, capital Q, SI unit Coulomb. What am I speaking about this electric charge? This electric charge, yes, can be considered to be at rest. Or this electric charge can be considered to be in motion. If I speak about the word static, that means we are dealing with studies related to electric charge at rest. But when I'm speaking about current electricity, what are we studying? We are studying about electric charge in motion. So the word static stands for stationary, but the word current stands for motion. Hence, if I want to speak about what do you mean by the term current electricity, then for a student to understand the term current electricity, what do you say? As I told you, electricity is electric charge. Capital Q at symbol, SI unit Coulomb. The word current stands for motion of electric charge. Now, any object when set into motion, yes, it has some energy associated with it. Likewise, for current electricity, if I want to speak, then what is current electricity? It's the energy associated with a moving charge. So one can ask you, what exactly you mean by current electricity? What do you mean by current electricity? Energy associated with a moving charge. Now when you look at the statement, energy associated, for a student, we'll get, try to understand what exactly you mean by electric charge. Moving electric charge. Yes, we all are familiar about two basic electric charge protons and electrons. Where do you find the protons to be? Protons are embedded into the nucleus having a charge positive. Thereby, nucleus has a positive charge. What about electrons? Electrons certainly revolve around the nucleus performing uniform circular motion and they have a negative charge. So, if I speak about electric charge, then charges are of two kinds we consider. We simply call a proton and an electron. If I want to represent proton symbolically, how exactly we represent in form of a symbol? Proton, 1 plus 1. Electron, E0 minus 1. The superscript speaks about, we consider its mass is considered to be negligible for electron and as a unit mass. But what about proton we consider? It's positively charged and electron we consider negatively charged. So proton positively charged, electron negatively charged. Now when I speak about energy associated 
with a moving charge, then a student should know, yes, we are speaking about motion of any of these charges, whether it's proton or whether it's electron. The term current electricity was invented long, very long before. It was initially tried to put forward by Ampere and Volta while dissecting a frog. During those days, electrons were not at all discovered. Thereby, they considered to be a proton, that's a flow of a charge, a positive charge. Since electrons were no more considered during those days, they consider flow of positive charge to be a flow of electric current. Now when I speak about flow of charge, flow of protons, but what happens when this protons is flowing? Yes, it has some energy associated with it. Energy always flows from where to where. As a student knows it, energy always flows from where to where? From a region of high potential to a region of what? Region of low potential. So when one wants to speak about flow of energy, yes, energy always flows from where to where? From a region of high potential to a region of low potential. To understand current electricity, yes, we'll now understand two simple analogues, two simple illustrations to understand flow of energy. Take a simple example. Suppose if I happen to take a water tank. This water tank now I'll consider it to be in two ways. One having a broader width we consider and one having a narrow width considered. These two beakers are now connected by a side tube having a stop cock in between. S stands for the stop cock. I have a cylinder A. I have a cylinder B. What am I trying to do into this? To understand concept of what? Flow of energy. As if I told you, energy flows from where to where? From high potential to low potential. Let us consider tank A or the cylinder A consists of water and that water is at a higher level. HL stands for higher level. Let us consider that the beaker B or the cylinder B has water which is at the lower level. Now, if you consider what is the difference between the two levels, then yes, a student should say, Sir, it is actually the difference in the hydrostatic pressure. I am using the word hydrostatic. Yes, it is a term related to water. Since there is a difference in potentials, difference in the level, what happens if I happen to open this top cock? Yes, water starts running from where to where? From A to B. Now, when the water starts running, the level of A will certainly go on decreasing. But what about the level of B? Will certainly goes on increasing. This will go on, this will go on, this will go on until the two levels become equipotential. Now if you see this dotted red ink, what exactly this dotted red ink speaks about? Yes, the two levels are now reached to what? Reached to equipotential. So when the water reaches at an equal level, yes, there is no movement of water. That means when the two ends becomes equipotential, water does not flow. So what was the reason for the water to flow? It's the difference in the hydrostatic potential energy. This difference has caused water to move from where to where? From A to B. This is one simple illustration, one simple example or an analog to prove energy always flows from where to where? From higher level to lower level. Take one more basic example. Suppose if I happen to consider a hot body. This hot body is at a high temperature. Let us consider 80 degrees Celsius. Another body, if I happen to consider, which is at a low temperature, 20 degrees Celsius. Both these bodies are placed in an isolated surroundings. That means, considered to be placed in an insulator. So that no external heat energy should enter the system, nor even the heat energy should come out of the system. Then, then in those conditions, who will lose the heat energy? Yes, a body at a 
high temperature will certainly lose the heat energy. And who is going to gain the heat energy? A body is at a low temperature. What exactly heat? Heat, a form of energy. What exactly the flow of water was? A flow of energy. If I say heat is a form of energy, energy always flows from where to where? Yes, we have learned it from high potential to low potential. Over here, from a higher level to a lower level. What do I call over here then? From a high temperature to a low temperature. Once when the two bodies reaches to a common temperature, T degrees Celsius, what's going to happen in that case? The two bodies will attain thermal equilibrium. Will there be flow of heat energy? No. Will there be flow of water over here? No. Why? Because the two levels have become equipotential. Likewise, likewise, we say a charge has to move and if a charge has to move, certainly there will be some energy associated. But if I want this charge to move, there should be a difference in potential. Over here for flow of water we call hydrostatic potential difference. For flow of heat energy we call the thermal potential difference. In case of electricity what we call electric potential difference. So now if I want to understand motion of charge, yes motion of charge, there is some energy associated. For this energy to move, there should be some difference in electric potential difference. Who provides me this electric potential difference? Can you tell me? Who provides this electric potential difference? Over here, you can say, yes sir, difference in water level. Over here, it's a difference in temperature. Likewise, who provides me electric potential difference? In simple terms, what is the source for electric potential difference? Source. Source. A cell, a battery. A cell or a battery. Yes, a cell or a battery will certainly have what? An electric potential difference. Try to take a simple, ordinary cell from the market. A Novena or an Everready, whatever cells you consider. When you happen to take that cell, carefully look onto it. They will certainly write down onto it 1.5 volt. Now, if in case if I look at a cell, yes, a cell has one end which is considered to be positive, the other end we consider to be negative. What exactly the positive end I'll consider to be as the higher level? What about the negative end I'll consider as the lower level? That means high potential and low potential. Likewise, you have a difference in water level, difference in temperature. Yes, this difference we call difference in electric potential difference. This electric potential difference is of how much? 1.5 volt. This difference will certainly cause what to flow? An electric charge to flow. And when this electric charge is flowing, it will have some energy associated. What kind of energy? What kind of energy will be associated for a charge in motion? Electric charge in motion has some energy. Certainly, it will be called as kinetic energy. This kinetic energy is so associated with the moving charge, simply we call current electricity. So if I want to speak about what exactly the term electricity? Yes, electric charge. SI unit, Coulomb. Electric charge, classified into two, static and current we consider. Static, rest, current and motion. We are trying to understand current electricity. What did I speak about? Current electricity. Energy associated with a moving charge. What kind of charges? You all are aware about it. Protons and electrons. Initially, which charge we considered? Protons. Because electrons were not at all discovered during those days. It was protons which was playing a role. That's what the physicists used to think. These protons were considered to be as the charge which was certainly in motion. And when the charge is set into motion, it will have some energy associated. If I want to speak about flow of energy, then what causes the flow of energy? The energy flows from where to where? From high potential to low potential. The difference in water level causes water to flow. The difference in temperature will certainly cause heat to flow. Thereby, a difference in electric potential difference will certainly cause an electric charge to 
flow. And when this electric charge flows, it will have some kinetic energy associated. This kinetic energy so associated with the moving charge we call current electricity. Now when I speak about further add, electric potential difference. A source is a cell. What is going to happen when I take this particular cell and connect it to two metallic plates? What's going to happen in that case? One end will be positively charged, the other end we consider to be negatively charged. Yes, there is a difference in potential difference we consider. And that potential difference will certainly cause charge to flow. So today, we have certainly spoken about flow of energy. And the cost of flow of energy for current we consider is what? A cell or a battery. Certainly, this is just a gesture we consider. But henceforth, certainly, whenever we are going to interact, the interaction will be in such a way that yes, the student should get the concepts properly. So, eagerly waiting to meet you all, to work out with you all, and to have a better knowledge regarding the topic.